Hey you guys, welcome to video two on how to create a paper mache sculpture. In my first video, I show you how to create the armature for the sculpture using um, cardboard, masking tape, and then some found materials. This video will show you how to actually do the paper mache um, using Elmer's glue, and then I use something called paper mache clay to completely cover my piece. And I've already have the finished piece. So this is my final painted paper mache llama. You can see I was able to get quite a bit of form. And again, I added lots of fun details with the paints. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do all of those steps to finish up your sculpture. Before I begin, I'm going to pour my glue on a paper plate and add a little bit of water just to make it a little easier to work with. So I'm going to go with about two parts Elmer's glue and one part water, and I'm using a brush to mix them together. Um, I'm going to use a brush in the beginning of my paper mache sculpting, and what I kind of realized is it's just messy, and while a paintbrush might seem like it would be helpful, um, I ended up just being covered in glue with my hands and just putting it aside and using my hands for most of this. So if you have a, a paintbrush, great, you can try using that, but you definitely do not need to for this assignment. <laughs> I also am going to need lots of paper for my paper mache. I can use newspaper or any type of thinner paper. So I've got white printer paper. You can use origami paper if you have some left over. Um, just make sure that you tear enough pieces. The reason why I chose white printer paper is just because it's going to be easier to paint later. And you wanna tear lots of pieces right now while your hands are clean because once they get glue on them, it's a lot more difficult to stop and tear up more pieces. And I'm going to tear them pretty small because my sculpture is pretty small. The paper mache process is pretty straightforward. You wanna start by putting glue on your piece. You'll grab a piece of paper, um, make sure that you press it onto your sculpture really, really well. And then you also wanna put glue over the top of that paper so it's completely saturated with glue. You can do this a few ways. You can use a paintbrush and paint on the glue, or you can just take that piece of paper, dip it directly in your glue bin and use your fingers to smooth it on. Just make sure you completely cover your piece and make sure that you press your paper really well to your piece so you don't lose the shape that you've created because you've worked hard to create that shape. That took a lot of time, so we don't wanna lose it. Okay, I'm gonna skip through a lot of this. I'm gonna put this in super fast mode. I don't wanna waste a lot of your time. I want you to spend most of your time doing artwork and not watching the video, but just know this took me a long time, okay? It takes a while to do your paper mache. It takes a while to cover your entire piece. It takes patience. And unlike the plaster wrap, plaster wrap you wanna to try to do all in one setting because otherwise it's really hard. It doesn't stick to itself very well. Um, paper mache can be done in multiple settings and actually it's kind of nice to do that because it will dry and then when you come back to your piece even if it's a few hours later it's not going to be so sticky and it's not going to stick to whatever is underneath your piece as badly so feel free to set this aside you don't have to finish this all in one setting um, but yes you do need to cover the entire piece before you can move on to the next step and after I've completely covered my piece with paper mache, I'm going to leave it sit overnight so it dries out completely. All right, I still wasn't that happy with the shape even after I finished my paper mache and I wanted to try something that a student in this class recommended and try out some paper mache clay. So I mixed on a big batch of paper mache clay. I will share the recipe and where I got this um, with you in our classroom page and it made a lot, right? So if this is something that you're interested in experimenting with, I have a whole bunch left over and I will send some to you. Just let me know. What this is going to do is it's going to soften the shape of my sculpture and add a little bit of a different texture. Okay, so the way that we put this on is applying it just like you would cream cheese on a bagel. Is that a weird thing to make a connection to? I don't know, but that's really what it reminded me of. I took a plastic knife and I just spread this thinly over my entire piece. And again, what this did is it softened my corners and it gave it a little bit of a different texture. 
If your animal has feathers or maybe it has longer hairs, you might be able to create some fun textures with this. I really was very impressed with this paper mache clay and I definitely plan to use it again in the future. So if that's something that you're interested in trying out again, just let me know. I do strongly recommend it and I will send some to you. You don't have to make your own, although you can if you'd like. The ingredients are pretty straightforward and you probably have most of them in your house, but I will send some to you to save you that step and you can try it out on your own. Okay, and after I had my whole piece completely covered, I was able to just kind of mold this and shape it to whatever kind of texture I wanted. So my llama has wool, so I wanted to try to create like a wool type texture. You might have some other textures that you're trying to create with your own sculpture, which might be kind of fun. This was probably my favorite part, but also you had to be really careful not to mess it up too badly because it was still damp and not dried out yet. <laughs> Okay, so after you have completely covered your piece with the paper mache clay, it does have to dry for a few days. So I finished my piece on Friday and I let it sit over the weekend and painted it on Monday. There is flour in the paper mache clay, so it's super important that it dries out completely, otherwise it could start to mold or possibly get smelly or we just, we wanna make sure that's dry, right? And then um, for painting, I used acrylic paints for my piece. So um, I, had to ha I had some at home, I was able to do that. You are not required to paint your sculpture. That is not something that you have to do. It's going to be optional. Um, and those of you that do decide to paint it, I will actually give you some extra credit for that. But again, it's not required because um, I know that probably many of you don't have acrylic paints at home or have access to that. So um, my requirement will be just to finish the sculpture. All right, I hope this video was super helpful to you guys. And um, let me know, of course, if you have any questions.